Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, we'll be explaining what number the Psalm has in the douay Reims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list Psalm numbers as they're given in the douay Reims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 61 in the douay Reims Bible, but Psalm 62 in the RSV. Unto the end, for Idithan, a Psalm of David. Idithan was also mentioned way back in Psalm 38. As I said in that episode, though, not much is known about him now, just that he was a man who David knew, and that his sons played the harp in praise of God. Shall not my soul be subject to God? For from him is my salvation. For he is my God and my Savior. He is my protector. I shall be moved no more. We're saved by God, so we cooperate in being his subjects. He protects us, preventing the faithful from suffering lasting harm. How long do you rush in upon a man? You all kill, as if you were thrusting down a leaning wall and a tottering fence. But they have thought to cast away my price. I ran in thirst. They blessed with their mouth, but cursed with their heart. Killers and deceivers are always trying to get the upper hand over God's faithful. But be thou, O my soul, subject to God, for from him is my patience. For he is my God and my Savior, he is my helper, I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory, he is the God of my help, and my hope is in God. God gives us patience, salvation, help, glory, and hope for future happiness, among every other good thing. There's nothing good that we have which God isn't responsible for. However, these verses phrase it that God is our salvation, hope, and glory as well. This is because goodness isn't just some present that God bought for us. It really is his nature that we're experiencing every time we experience something good. We just don't always realize it. Trust in him, all ye congregation of people. Pour out your hearts before him. God is our helper forever. Human beings can always betray you, and revealing all your secrets to any of them is going to open you up to being stabbed in the back. However, God is fully trustworthy. He already knows our secrets, but he won't use them to betray you, only for your good. Speaking to him in prayer is something you can always do safely and comfortably. But vain are the sons of men. The sons of men are liars in the balances that by vanity they may together deceive. Human beings often prioritize temporary, earthly concerns rather than the commandments of God, which we now know can lead to eternal life. Because of this, they often deceive others on purpose. The term liars in the balances refers to the way things are balanced on an ancient scale. It means that when things are measured out, their lies are exposed. Trust not in iniquity, and cover not robberies. If riches abound, set not your heart upon them. Don't put your trust in sins or riches, no matter how many you have, and don't protect criminals from justice. God hath spoken once, these two things have I heard, that power belongeth to God, and mercy to thee, O Lord, for thou wilt render to every man according to his works. The absolute justice of God is a common theme in both the Old and New Testaments, and is so well established that no line of reasoning is enough to undermine it. His mercy is part of that justice, since it's through his justice that God grants mercy to those who've suffered under evildoers. This psalm is absolutely filled with good advice about how to approach our relationship with God and how to set our priorities when making our decisions and choosing which actions to take. However, it ends with a statement that the actions matter more than the priorities themselves. Choosing to do God's will and obey his commandments by avoiding sin and doing good is, in the end, more important than why we choose to do good. And this also is found in both the Old and New Testaments. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.